Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav Gulecha and I welcome you. In this video, I am talking about what were the Buddha's teachings on anger, what were the Buddha's actual words on anger, right? So, I have compiled the excerpts of uh, from the discourses that Buddha had given, the various discourses he had given and whatever I could find out, whatever I could collect, the actual discourses or the words of the Buddha, I have tried to compile in this video. If I have missed something, please do let me know. Any sutra that I have missed, I will incorporate it. Uh, so, you can check that. Uh, in the comment section, you can let me know. Right? So, anger is per se. Just before proceeding, see, one thing what very clearly, anger is a highly destructive force. It is uh, one of the strongest uh, mental defilements that we have and we have carried it from various, various past lives and, you know, so, Buddha was very clear and unequivocal in his approach, in his uh, 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 statements on anger and uh, Buddha was very clear that if you cannot give up anger, then you cannot give up suffering, right? So, uh, it's, you know, giving up anger is a challenge for many of us. I have also dealt with anger issues in my life and uh, uh, I will cover it in a separate video on how to overcome anger. I will cover it in a separate video. Uh, but Buddha was very clear. So, let's take it point by point what Buddha's teachings was. So, uh, the one thing that I was, I could find was Buddha said that, uh, Buddha said that one who values the anger moves to hell. That means Buddha said that mendicants, uh, someone with four qualities is cast down to hell, right? Someone with four qualities is, goes to hell. What four qualities? So, uh, Buddha said they value anger or denigration or material possessions or honor rather than the true teaching. Someone with these four qualities, right, who basically value anger, denigration, material possessions or uh, uh, to, uh, honor rather than the teaching, right, they go down to the hell realm. So, this is a very, very strong statement by the Buddha, right. So, what is important here is that we, Buddha is not saying that if you are, if you have anger, you will straight away go to hell. But Buddha said that if you value anger more than the true teaching, then the true teaching of the Dharma. What is the teaching? The Four Noble Truths and the Noble Eightfold Path, which is the core teaching of the Buddha. If you value anger more than that, then there is a chance. So, what basically my understanding of this is that although we may have anger, right, we are not free from anger, we are living in this world of Maya, still we can value the teaching more than our anger. We can try in this life to be free from anger through the path that was given by the Buddha, which is the Noble Eightfold Path. Right? So, that is our job. It's not that we need to be just without anger so that we can, you know, we can avoid any suffering, but we have to value the teaching more than the anger. Try to practice the teaching in our daily life as much as possible. A complete understanding of anger. Here, Buddha said, mendicants, without directly knowing and completely understanding anger, without dispassion for it and giving, giving it up, you cannot end suffering. So, this is again a very, very important statement that Buddha has said that if you cannot give up anger, if you cannot understand anger for what it is, right? See, Buddha's teaching is very clear that you have to see reality as it is, which is vipassana, which is insight. So, what our task here is that we need to, through our meditation practice, whatever meditation practice we do, right? I have made videos on insight meditation. So, you can check that, start doing insight meditation every day. In inside meditation, what we do is that we start seeing things as they are. We start seeing the emotions as they arise in us. And with repeated practice, with repeated noting of these sensations as they arise, we realize that it's just arising and passing away. Right? It, things are just arising internally as well as externally. So, what, the, what I get, get from Buddha's teaching here is that if you cannot, you have to understand anger. You have to understand this emotion and once we understand this, then we, when we can free, then we can give it up and then we can end our suffering. But if we cannot understand it completely, how we can understand is by practicing mindfulness, by practicing, by practicing insight, by practicing mindfulness, we get the insight. So the more we are mindful in our daily life, in our thoughts, in our mindfulness of feelings and sensations and you know how things are arising in us, then we will able to, we will be able to completely understand the anger and go beyond it. Otherwise, what will happen is that we basically live mindlessly, right? We do not look deeply into how this anger is arising and how this anger is falling in me. If we live like that, 
then anger will not uh, end and our suffering will not end right no matter what outer rituals we do uh, outer practices we do so buddha is teaching is very very refined you have to go within yourself if you cannot go within yourself and look into these traits these defilements that arise in you then you cannot give it up right so buddha said when overcome by anger beings go to a bad place again in this discourse also buddha says about going to hell right when overcome by anger beings go to a bad place having rightly understood that anger the discerning give it up once they have given it up they never return to this world so that is how important it is the rewards of giving up anger are also very high that you get to you know uh, achieve nirvana which is the goal which is the freedom from suffering right okay then there is this thing a uh, 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 sutta i found killing of anger is the only killing which is praised by the wise ones so uh, i'm just reciting so uh, deity a deity came uh, uh, came to the buddha and addressed it in a verse what when what is incinerated incinerated means kill, killed do you sleep at ease when what is incinerated there is no sorrow what's the one thing gautama who is killing you would approve so gautama the buddha said when anger is incinerated you sleep at ease when anger is incinerated there is no sorrow o deity anger has a poisonous root and a honey tip the noble ones praise its killing for when it's incinerated there is no sorrow so buddha always said uh, no killing right which is the fundamental precept right one of the five precepts that we need to adhere if we are on the path of the buddha is no killing but only one killing is allowed by the buddha and that is a killing of anger so so see how important it is uh, what buddha's teaching is what our master's teaching is to us that anger needs to be killed because uh, buddha knew that this can lead a person because see what anger does what anger does is that it basically when anger the thought arises if you cannot control then it manifests through speech your speech becomes wrong false speech wrong speech hatred speech then it manifests through body through actions then people do violent acts right so all that creates karma and then we we will once we create a negative karma unwholesome karma we are bound to get the suffering right okay and in that conducting of wholesome karma unwholesome karma if we if if we do any unwholesome action like killing anyone killing a human or killing a you know a wise person straight away you know the you know humongous negative karma we accumulate so very important that we nip it in the bud the anger in the bud what to do if someone is angry with you okay on this point buddha said that uh, basically this is i have made a separate video on this particular thing that if the other person is angry what happens is that when the other person is angry we also become angry right because the other person's anger basically waters the seeds of our own anger our own violent tendencies in us so this is where our practice comes to our rescue if we are diligent in our meditation mindfulness practice then what happens that even even if the other person is angry we don't get angry we don't get that much angry right we can maintain our calm we can maintain our mindfulness so buddha has said that if you can maintain your mindfulness when the other person is 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 angry and you don't get angry with him then you are not only helping yourself but you are also helping that person right so uh, so this is basically buddha's teaching on this particular thing i have made a separate video on this particular point what to do if someone is angry with you the link to that video is also in the description you can check that right okay then we come to certain dhammapada verses where buddha has said about anger right uh, bu- so buddha said that they abused me they hit me they beat me they robbed me for those who bear such a grudge hatred never ends never indeed is hatred stilled by hatred it will be only stilled by love this is an eternal law so this is buddha is clear that see till now what has happened is that we always harbor these thoughts of hatred in us and they they they, they pollute our mind so buddha is saying that if, even if someone has done wrong to us so do not harbor thoughts of anger or hatred against that person it will only harm you so what we have to do is that we have to still those thoughts by non hatred right by through practice of love through practice of loving kindness right then uh, there is another verse 
give up anger, get rid of conceit and escape every fetter. Sufferings don't befall one who has nothing, not clinging to name and form. So, again, Buddha says, give up anger. Do, do not cling to name and form. So, why anger? So, understanding anger is very, very important. We need to understand. Why we become angry is because we attach to a... We, we give the impermanence to a particular concept, to a particular idea, to a particular person, to ourselves. We think everything is permanent and we have this anger. When we realize, when we practice uh, uh, our mindfulness, we realize that everything is impermanent. The nature of this existence is, is impermanent. When everything is impermanent, where is my anger? So, I am changing, the person is changing, my ideas and my concepts about the person is changing. Right? Everything is changing. The emotions, the sensations of anger, that is also changing, just rising and falling. When I realize that, when I, then I give up everything. I do not cling to any name and form. I don't cling to any, any concept also. And that is the end of anger. So all we are all in the, that stage of practice. And these verses, when we keep studying these verses, what it does is that it keeps us grounded and stable in knowledge. Otherwise, there are so many things. We are living in a maya, maya jal. Right? We are living in a trap of maya, illusion. And we, we can you know, lead astray. But our, when we keep coming back to the learnings, coming back to the teachings of the Buddha, then we are grounded that, you know, on these things. Okay. Then there is another verse that I could find was, Do not let, let anger overpower you. Do not become angry at the one who is angry. In noble one's hearts, there is always non-anger and harmlessness. But anger crushes evil people, just like a mountain crushes beings. So here Buddha is giving the analogy, a simile of a mountain. As a mountain crushes people, similar way anger crushes evil people. See, there is no evil person. A person is just, you know, he is, he, he is bound by the chains of these defilements. Right? So, so one of the chain, strong chain is anger. And that keeps, you know, it crushes, means it creates sorrow. And, and, and suffering for that particular person. So what basically our point is, harboring thoughts of love, peace and compassion in our mind. Right? So that, that we have to try. Then another verse of Dhammapada, Do not speak harshly to anyone. Those who are harshly spoken to might retaliate against you. Angry words hurt other feelings. Even blows may overtake you in return. So here Buddha is saying that, do not speak. Our speech so one is that we should not harbor angry thoughts. We should have positive, compassionate thoughts as much as possible. We should not speak harshly, right? Because we create sorrow for other person for us. See, we can constructively give feedback on to the other person. Something is not right. But everything we do, we have to do mindfully, not mindlessly, right? Giving feedback, constructive. Or if you want to take any action, take it constructive action. But don't blabber mindlessly. Don't, you know, ha use harsh words mindlessly. Because people, you know, it's like weapons. The, the wound gets healed after time. But uh, the, the wounds of words, they stay with the person for many, many years and many, many decades. Right? So we don't create a, on the Buddha's path that we are. We try not to create suffering through our thoughts through our speech, through our bodily actions, right? Okay, forbearance is the highest observance. Patience is the highest virtue, so the Buddha says. So patience, cultivating more and more patience. Then another verse, let a man remove his anger, let him root out his pride. Let him overcome all fetters of passions. No suffering overtake him, who neither clings to mind and body, nor claims anything in the world, right? Then Buddha says, conquer anger by non-anger. Conquer evil by good. Conquer miserliness by liberality. Conquer a liar by truthfulness. So, Buddha says, conquer anger by non-anger. So, you cannot conquer anger by anger. As Mahatma Gandhi said, an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. Right? So, there is no end to an anger. If you respond, other person becomes angry. If you also respond with anger, right? You can do everything. But, in a calm way, we can all do that. Then guard your mind against an outburst of wrong feelings. Keep your mind controlled. Renouncing evil thoughts develop purity of mind. So what does guarding of the mind means is being mindful. Being mindful. Mindfulness is the like the watchman of our five sense doors. Our speech, our hearing, our, 
our tongue, our right, uh, right. So mindfulness, practicing mindfulness in daily life. What is right now arising in me? Keeping that awareness within us, right? That is how we can guard our mind. When we are mindful, mindful, what happens is that even if we come across an object which can give us anger, what happens is that that object, the latent defilements which are there in us, they do not get a chance to come up, right? When we are mindful. Otherwise, what happens? We see an object outside. That object is basically just a means to generate the defilements of anger within us. But when we are mindful, we can watch that object but watch that object for what it really is and not from the lens that, you know, of our latent defilements, right? Okay. Then there is this thing about consequences of anger. Um, it's 15 minutes, so I'm just seeing how many points it is. Okay. Let us, let us cover this here in this video only. Okay. So, consequences of anger. Um, Buddha says that... Uh, person who is irritable, bad-tempered, becomes annoyed, hostile, after death he is reborn in a plane of misery, which is earlier also Buddha has said, in the hell realms. If he is not reborn in hell, but instead reborn in the human world, then when, wherever he is reborn, he is ugly. That person becomes, is born ugly, in wherever he borns in the human realm. Right? Okay. And then Buddha says that a person who is not irritable, who is, you know, not becomes annoyed, he is reborn in happy world heaven. If he is not reborn in heaven, but instead reborn in human world, then wherever he is reborn, he is beautiful. Right? So that is again a consequence of anger. Then Buddha deals with a practical advice on how to deal, how to stop negative thoughts. Right? So here he gives a practical advice. So not only for anger, but for any negative emotions, negative thoughts that we have. I have made a very, very detailed video on this particular thing. The link is there in the description for that video. You can check that video where Buddha has given the practical steps. Here I am just summarizing it. So Buddha says five things. First, if your negative thoughts arise, focus on subjects connected with the skillful. That means move to like skillful topics, skillful thoughts like compassion, love, kindness. Immediately move, switch your thinking. Second, if that doesn't work, examine the drawbacks of these thoughts. What these thoughts, you know, what is the impact of these thoughts? What is anger? Anger is suffering only. Right? Our anger creates our suffering. So we just examine on the impact. We create suffering. What we basically do is that we, uh, you know, through our anger, we create suffering for not only us, but also the people around us. Right? So just Im Im uh, create, just think about the impact that the sa sa anger will do. Third, try to forget and ignore about them. Right? That's the third approach Buddha says. Just forget. Wa clear it off from your mind like a dust, dust board. Right? A blackboard. You just clear off the things on a blackboard. Similar way, you just clear off the thoughts from your mind. Fourth, focus on stopping the formation of the thoughts. Try to stop the formation. Don't let the... Because what happens is when anger comes, if we dwell on it, then it increases, increases, increases. We, our task is to stop the formation of the, those thoughts. Fifth is... If nothing else works, then with teeth clenched and tongue pressed against the roof of the mouth, they should squeeze, squash and crush the mind. So, squeeze, suppress those thoughts. Right? So That's the fifth and the last approach, if nothing else works. So, check my detailed video on that, this particular piece. Okay. Now, what happens to an angry person? Uh, there is actually some things that already covered, like a person is born ugly, he is born in uh, bad realms, they sleep badly. Then Buddha says, when they get what they need, they take it to be what they don't need. That means they are never happy in what they get. So that is again a consequence. Then there is a like a, it's a kind of a discourse where I am just saying it. An angry person kills with body or speech. So we practice, we say no killing, right? We do not kill any animals. We do not kill any animals for our meals. We don't, right? We practice that precept. But anger is like killing only. We kill with our speech, we kill our, with our body. By, when we do violence, we kill with our body. When we speak harsh words, with, we kill. So we are actually kind of a breaking that precept. Right? So that we need to overcome with anger, they lose their wealth. So they lose their wealth. What my understanding is the wealth of merit. 
so what anger does is it takes it takes away all our merit all our good karmas whatever we have accumulated all that goes down the drain when we practice anger right mad with anger they fall into disgrace family friends and loved ones avoid an irritable person anger creates harm anger upsets the mind that person doesn't recognize the danger that arises within an angry person doesn't know the good an angry person doesn't see the truth when a person is beset by anger only blind darkness is left an angry person destroys with ease what was hard to build that means all his even his reputation right whatever his merit that was hard to build he all he destroys all the relations with his friends family members in seconds he destroys everything afterwards when the anger is spent they are tormented as if burnt by fire all the remorse all the guilt why i was angry that all comes up and they are tormented in like they it they are getting burned by fire their look betrays their sulkiness like a fire smoky plume and when their anger flares up they make others angry they make others also angry because what they do is that when person becomes angry the others around him their seeds of anger are also watered the deeds that torment a man are far from those that are good i'll explain them now listen to this for the for it's the truth an angry person slays their father their mother too they slay an angry person slays a saint a normal person too they slay slay a man is raised by his mother who is who shows him the world but an angry ordinary person slays even that good woman who gave him life so buddha is talking here about killing and killing even parents killing saints this is like you know five things which buddha said can take a person straight to hell right can it's not can it just takes a person straight to hell so in the bout of anger the person so buddha is talking about the extremes that a person can go that he can commit murder and all these things so never never ever do that like oneself all sentient beings hold themselves most dear but angry people kill, kill themselves all kind of ways and distraught for many reasons some kill themselves with sword some distraught take poison some hang themselves with rope or fling themselves down a mountain gorge when they commit deeds of destroying life they are killing themselves they don't realize what they do for anger leads to their downfall the snare of death in the form of anger lies hidden in their heart you should cut it out by self control by wisdom energy and right ideas cut it out by self control by wisdom energy and right ideas an astute person should cut out this unskillful thing then they train in the teaching just in the same way not yielding to sulkiness free from anger free from despair free from greed with no more longing tamed having given up their anger the undefiled become fully extinguished means their work is done they will not be reborn anymore right so that was a long kind of a discourse but i thought to speak that right uh, if it helps anyone then there are just a couple of random verses there is one verse where buddha says <coughs> suppose some bandits catch of you and sever so uh, catch you and you know sever your body from limb to limb that means tear your body from limb to limb with a saw and buddha says even if you are my true follower then if you are a true follower of my teaching then you you will not even feel angry at that moment right so this is again this is like the buddha's highest expectation that even when your body's parts are being cut by some person then still then you will not feel angry that is the level of the peace and calm that we need to develop in ourselves right then there is another uh, a verse that i came across as a log from a pyre burnt at both ends and fouled in the middle serves neither for firewood in the village nor for timber in the forest so such is a wrathful man that means a person who is angry is of no use so buddha is comparing him to like a log from a pyre burnt at both ends and fouled in the middle serves no purpose that means an angry man is not at all of any use right so these are uh, just what i could gather uh, from my research on the buddha's discourses if i have missed any particular discourse do let me know do share in the comments and i will try to include that uh, you can also read this particular uh, thing Uh, what i have shared this particular content this particular compilation of buddha's teachings on my buddha uh, teachings blog uh, that the link to that is also given in the description uh, and uh, i hope and all the sutras links also they given in that particular um, uh, uh, blog entry 
so uh, i hope this was useful uh, in some way do share feedback whether you are liking this kind of sharing that i am doing on the buddha's teachings or if you want me to you know change my approach in any way so that you know the see the idea uh, i'm just being frank here is the idea is that you know i want to just reach out to people see buddha's teachings are in a way complex and there is a lot of research that i had to do to take out this information but they have to be made more and more accessible and easy to understand for people so that people can relate it to them relate to them right i am also working on shorts one minute kind of a videos where i will kind of break it down to one minute videos and share uh, but i also thought these long videos also help so do share your thoughts and feedback it will really help me uh, thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaya namo buddhaya